Hi, this is Shadi. I have discussed Mongol wrestling quite extensively uh, on this channel for the past four years. I've talked about the Boch of Inner Mongolia and Mainland Mongolia, comparing it to Judo, diving deep into their techniques, but there is a form that remains somewhat obscure and almost lost and it deserves its own video and that is the wrestling of the Oirat Mongols or what people call the Kalmyk of the Republic of Kalmykia situated in the west of what is called the now called the um, Federation of Russia so and they have a very long history of migration a lot of cultural aspects i'm not gonna dive too much into them for the sake of this video but i will say that this video would not have been possible without uh, violetta of the diversity podcast she herself is kalmyk and so she was more than happy to share a lot of uh, references which i will link uh, below as well as her channel uh, she discusses a lot of cultural aspects of kalmyk culture of course other indigenous uh, people so feel free to check it out as well as the references for this video if you want to learn uh, more so the first evidence of the Kalmyk wrestling is can be found in the epic of Jangar it is somewhat similar to the Japanese's Nihongi so there is a lot of folklore and history and it is essentially a collection of poems uh, it is believed that it is compiled between the 15th and the 17th uh, century and recently it has been uh, translated but you can see here the wrestling is mostly uh, through that depiction it is a form of belt uh, wrestling so of course uh, much like a lot of wrestling uh, cultures and folk style wrestling this wrestling was mainly for military purposes but later as they migrated and as time pr progressed you can see that wrestling became a cultural activity and so it uh, included a lot of things like their philosophy and even moral education and aesthetics which is something that i found very interesting considering that the founder of judo jigoro kano included a lot of uh, moral education into judo as well so it is not simply uh, f to show who is the strongest or who is the biggest, but also uh, it is a reflection of their culture, much like Mongol Boch and how they uh, show their herding culture through their wrestling. So uh, before the mid 19th century, uh, they, the aristocrats, so to speak, they owned a lot of wrestlers and these wrestlers would compete. And so when these wrestlers win mostly it is the owner that gets a lot of their uh, prize so kind of like a feudal system but after the mid 20th uh, or sorry 19th century uh, the prizes went mostly to the wrestlers and that included things like cattle and of course uh, things like uh, crops and prize money and this obviously pushed people to train uh, harder so let's take a look at some modern footage of this uh, wrestling and see a few techniques now when it comes to the gripping it is a bit like uh, judo in the sense that it can be free meaning i can let go and i can fight for a grip i can prevent a grip not like a lot of belt wrestling where the grips are fixed like say for example uh korean uh, wrestling and you can see here for example this beautiful uh, inner reap very common in judo and one of the most or highest scoring techniques what we call in judo o uchi gari and you see it's a big inner reap of course a mongol boch also has this technique very uh, popular as well and of course it is not surprising that with this type of wrestling as well you're gonna see inner reaps being uh, performed because the human body is the same everywhere and so with these grips you're gonna often 
come to the same conclusion. But what's interesting when comparing wrestling style is how you get to the technique, not the technique itself. And so you see here, you have a lot of things that you can do. You have the short grips. Their shorts are special for this type of wrestling. You have the thin belt around the waist. And of course, you can tackle uh, the overhook and the underhook and you can go for bear hugs. So it's a very uh, liberated form of wrestling. You can do whatever you want grip wise. Now, uh, when it comes to the rules, it's much like sumo or uh, inner Mongolian uh, wrestling where anything you touch aside from the sole of your feet, you lose essentially. And uh, that makes it a very critical and sensitive uh, form of wrestling, which of course is a reflection of the battlefield because uh, let's say you lose your balance, you post your arm on the ground, you're in a very compromised position and the sword is uh, inevitable, of course. Now, this one here, the grip is quite interesting. You have a short grip and a belt grip and it looked like he was going for an inner thigh throw, what we call uh, an uchimata, as you can see here. But then as he couldn't get it, he turned around and then because his opponent's balance was going forward he continued it with uh, what we call in judo uki otoshi so this is the inner thigh throw as he was going for it again he had a cross grip down the back like a similar to a georgian grip and he was grabbing the shorts on the legs which uh, again creates a new dimension of uh, a gripping so different than the stuff that we are used to seeing so as you can see here, uh, it is a sleeve and lapel in judo, mostly, of course, there's many variations, but this is the basic form, but a short and a belt from a Georgian grip is uh, quite unique. So because he couldn't finish this particular throw, he actually transitioned to this one. So because after reaping the leg and he had already the forward momentum, he finished it with this, like a, what we call Uki Otoshi. So you see here, just with your hands and it is finished. And this one here, he was going for double legs, so to speak, but he turns around and then lifts up the leg, a very reminiscent of Konno's uh, scooping throw. So he lifts up the leg, but instead of picking him up all the way and having his feet uh, lift off the ground he actually scoops up the leg but then creates a rotation in order to get them moving and create the momentum of the throw and it is a very uh, energy efficient throw so with these short grips and belt grips together you tend to see um, different variations of a lot of throws that we would consider fundamental but performed differently so Again, it's always important to dive deep into these folk style wrestling. So this is mainly it. Uh, of course, uh, their culture is at threat, especially after the 1943 uh, exile to Siberia and after coming back and there was the reign of the Soviet Union. So a lot of cultural aspects such as language and of course wrestling are always under threat. So if you have anything to add, let me know down below. Look up the links uh, in the description below for references and the diversity podcast. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.